What's up, Navigating Academia family? This is your buddy and personal academic mentor, Dr. J. Phoenix Singh, your personal expert also in helping you get the postdoctoral fellowship of your dreams. If you guys need any assistance in maximizing the quality of your materials to be able to get that fellowship, you go ahead and you contact me down here via the website below, and we're going to be able to help you out. You're going to work one-on-one -on -one with me, and we're going to make sure that we get you into that program. I can tell you that I had my dream postdoc. A likelihood of getting in was less than 1% and was able to be able to bag it. Amazing salary, two years, launched my career. We can do the exact same thing for you. So in any case, let's jump right into it. Today, what I thought I would share with you guys is the three biggest mistakes that I personally have ever seen while sitting in a room, taking a look at the application materials of and interviewing a postdoctoral fellow or somebody who was applying, they did not get it, uh, to be a, uh, a postdoctoral fellow, okay? Uh, so I've got these down here in my notes. I was really thinking about this last night. Daria and I were sitting around right before dinner and uh, I was like, wow, you know, interview season here is either here or it's coming up for you. And uh, it's really important not just to learn what to do, but also what not to do. If you're new to the channel, please go ahead and like this video and be sure to subscribe for more great content like this. And in addition, we have uh, right now three, I'm sure there'll be more, uh, practice postdoctoral fellow interviews that you can take with me that are online on the channel right now where I literally am going to ask you the question and give you time to be able to respond. So volumes one, two, and three are all online right now. I want you to be sure to use those as often as possible in the days, weeks, even months before your interview to be able to make sure that you know exactly what to say. All right, so many people have gotten accepted just based on those videos alone. It's so generous, you guys sharing your stories of acceptance with me. You guys can always get in touch with me either via the website or you can also just comment below on the videos. I love to hear from you guys and I always respond to comments, so please do share your stories with me. Okay, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Three biggest mistakes. First one, was someone who literally they had no publication or funding plan. When you guys are applying for postdoctoral fellowship, you are going to be the colleagues now of faculty members. You're no longer somebody who's going to be under the tutelage of folks. Yes, it's likely you may have one or more postdoctoral supervisors, but again, this is really a collegial role. You are a junior faculty member. That is how you're going to be treated, and you need to act like one, okay? And no faculty member is just going to be kind of floating out there expecting someone else to tell them what to do, or just basically saying, well, you know, I'm going to have a, a supervisor, maybe a senior academic, and they'll just tell me everything that, you know, I'm expected to do. They'll put me on some papers. I'll, I'll help them out however they need to. They'll tell me what to do. No, that is not what a postdoctoral fellowship is about at all. And it should be something where after you finish your doctorate that you have a number of publications either that are still in the pipeline based on your doctoral work or that doctoral work has really set up nicely a research line where you already have a number of ideas, not one idea. It's not like, well, I want to do this one publication, right? Why? Because interviewers like myself are going to be like, hey, that sounds great. So, you know, where do you see things going from there? And if your answer is, oh, I don't know, just we'll see what happens. No. If nothing else, even if you're not sure exactly what you want to do in terms of that research line, you need to come up, I always call it the rule of three, come up with three ideas, right? X, Y, and Z. Come up with those, okay? Because that ends up being a narrative that people can buy into. Always, when it comes to human interactions in general, things work better in narratives, okay? We're natural storytellers. Tell me a story. Tell me the story of your future career. Tell me the story of what you're going to do if we actually accept you over all of these other applicants because the overwhelming preponderance of postdocs are funded. Why should we give you the money and not somebody else, right? So this is very important to be able to have a publication plan in place. And the second one is to be able to have a funding plan. In particular, if your field is one that really relies on external funding sources, like grants, donations from private foundations, you know, you name it, right? Government agency funding in my field, really, you know, we're applying for stuff from NIMH, which is National Institute of Mental Health in the U.S., a Department of Defense, also DOD, uh, NSF, which is National Science Foundation, you know, this is really the sort of places that we're going to be able to get uh, to be able to get money um, so uh, essentially if you don't have a funding plan if you don't already have some ideas of the types of not only funding sources but the grant mechanisms so for example if somebody comes in they're like well I'm really interested in applying for you know K grants 
I'll be just like, okay, fantastic. I know exactly what you're talking about, and that's a very reasonable kind of place to be able to start when it comes to you know NIH grants, right? Um, but if you come in and you say, well, you know, um, I'm really looking to apply for some funding, and I say, oh, this is great. You know, what uh, what kinds of uh, funding are you going to be looking for? And the answer is, well, you know, I was hoping actually that that's something that I would learn as part of my postdoc. You're just underprepared, underprepared. My goal is for you guys to outperform. Okay, I want you guys to be 2.5x as good as everybody else, right? Not twice as good, 2.5x. Why? Because then it's completely undeniable how amazing you are, okay? Um, so have a publication plan, have a funding plan, okay? One of the biggest mistakes that I've ever seen is just somebody, it's not that they were unprepared, they just really didn't think about any of these things beforehand. It was clear that they prepped things about, you know, like why do you want to be an academic, and why is this the right program? They had really prepped that stuff, but in terms of the practicalities, like nothing, okay? That's one of the biggest mistakes I've ever seen, okay? This biggest mistake number two is having no focus on how you are going to benefit the department, right? Oftentimes people think way too much about, okay, I'm gonna get this postdoc and here's how it's gonna be benefit me, right? I'm gonna get continued support when it comes to uh, funding opportunities, going to get continued support in terms of developing advanced skill sets, I'm gonna get continued kind of supervision in terms of people guiding me in my career, developing things if you wanna be an academic, uh, that's not, let's say, research academic, developing a pedagogical statement, getting your CV kind of uh, optimized. These things are incredibly important. Uh, so it's kind of obvious how you're gonna benefit. Also, it's a job, so you're gonna get paid in the overwhelming preponderance of cases, right? But it's one of those things where it's like, okay, you're getting all this stuff. What are you giving back? What is it that you wanna do? So for example, for me, one of the things that I said, because I love stats, right? Um, and I didn't have a lot of stats education, right? But I got really good at stats through self-education, right? I didn't end up taking, you know, 50 courses or anything like this. I just learned through doing, learned through making mistakes, you know, working 18-hour days for years at a time, uh, you know, like that is the grind that I ended up having, particularly during graduate school. Um, so that's the thing, right? So I said that I wanted to start like a weekly journal club or a weekly statistical methodology club where people would come in and teach really advanced uh, advanced stats. People would share code with each other if they were using something like MATLAB or Stata or R, you know, talking about their favorite statistical packages within that, like different modules that they could use. So like Amos for SPSS. Back then it was Amos. I'm not sure if it still is for structural equation modeling. Or for me, you know, in state I was using, you know, packages like, you know, MetaReg for meta regression and these sorts of things, sharing that kind of information. So I said I was really passionate about that, right? Like that was very important. I was also very passionate about uh, putting together uh, one or two special issues of my favorite impact factor journals. And I talked about specifically which faculty members I would, you know, would love to be able to have invited manuscripts from so they could benefit from that. Also in terms of not just kind of going to conferences to give paper presentations, but also to be able to put together symposium panels. And again, I said very specific topics and specific faculty members within that department that I would want to invite. At the same time, online, on the departmental website, they talked about different task forces they had. So I talked about those specific task forces. I knew everything about this program, everything about this department, and I tried to memorize as much as I could about every single faculty member because I didn't know exactly who was going to be in the, in the room, right, when it came to the interview. And so it was absolutely critical that when somebody was there that I'd be able to say, you know, oh, like Dr. X, you know, like their work on such and such. You know, it's very similar to that. Even if that person has nothing to do with the particular subfield that I'm in, right? So you need to make it really clear that the skill sets that you bring to bear and that that postdoctoral plan that you have is going to benefit the department right? Not just you. It's pretty obvious what you're getting out of the situation, right? It may not be as clear what they're getting, right? This is a sales job. You are trying to persuade them to buy you over a lot of other people, okay? This is not the time for the personal fable of saying, I'm so special, I'm so great, I did all these things, blah, 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 blah. No, okay? This is one of these situations where the people applying, especially for the top postdocs in your field, in your country, the competition's gonna be fierce, and you need to make sure your preparation is fierce as well, right? Like I said, if you guys need help with this kind of stuff, right, I am your guy to be able to grill you, right, on everything in terms of 
actual postdoctoral fellowship interview questions that have been asked, which we can tailor to your target program, right? And I can just grill you the way that I would in an actual interview, right? And again, just book a session down below or whatever, and we'll get it going. Just tell me your target program, send me your CV, uh, send me if you've got transcripts, um, and if you have any recent publications, send those to me as well, right? And we can get going on that. Okay, so that's biggest mistake number two. The third biggest mistake that I have ever seen in a postdoctoral fellowship interview, uh, it, it was somebody who basically said that they, or it, it's not that they said this, it's that I asked, uh, you know, okay, so long term, right? So like, if you guys have ever worked with me, you know that one of the things that I usually say is like, if I, you know, Thanos snap my fingers, and all of a sudden we're 10 years in the future, you know, t walk me through your week. If you're very happy, you're the happiest you've ever been in your life, uh, professionally speaking, what does your life look like so that it will generate that happiness for you? Uh, and this individual had absolutely no clue. They had no long-term plans, uh, and they were not sure in acad whether they'd be in academia or industry. That was the biggest problem with it, I would say. That having no long-term plans is bad enough. But then basically saying like, well, you know, I, I'm still kind of, you know, on, on the ropes here in terms of between academia and industry. And, you know, this is something I'm really hoping to, to figure out during the postdoc is kind of, you know, where I want to land. No. Just like when it comes to applying to graduate school, uh, especially for research-based programs, folks, they, they're not interested in people who just want to be full-time industry uh, unless it is kind of like a for-profit university that is just trying to get your money and they're going to charge you, you know, 100,000 US dollars plus, you know, like minimum to be able to get that degree. Then they may take you just because they want the money and they don't really care what your long-term plans are, even though they may say you, they do, right? Um, but for the real legit programs, right, they're going, the faculty members don't want to be supporting somebody for years and years and years. And then all of a sudden, you're just going to disappear into industry and that hopefully I pray for you that it will be beneficial financially for you and will be spiritually rewarding for you right it will fulfill your soul and make you feel satisfied in your life but the thing is is that they don't want to support that right they want somebody who's going to leave and be like a lifetime colleague and be indebted to them forever basically uh, like I am to my postdoctoral fellowship program right so if you say anything along the lines of being on the fence between academia and any other career field like going into industry this is just it's like an auto-reject, right? Any of these three that I mentioned today are like auto-rejects, okay? So those are the three biggest mistakes I've ever seen in postdoctoral fellowship interviews. Peace and love, guys. I'll talk to you very soon. Book a session. Love to talk to you. Bye-bye.